everybody, I'm here with iconic oh, composer, wow. Marty wow. O'Donnell. Thank you, appreciate it. We are at GameSoundCon. Yes. You just gave a very interesting talk. Thank you. If you don't know who he is, he is most well known for the Flintstones Vitamin song and the Mr. <laughs> Clean theme song yes. and jingle, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Lesser known for the Halo and Destiny soundtracks. Yeah, some sort of game soundtracks, yeah. Now, you said some really cool stuff in the, in the speech that you just gave. And coming into here, I was like, what is the Marty O'Donnell sound? Mm. Because I feel, to me, the mark of a great composer isn't necessarily like chops, arrangement, epicness, or anything like that. But it's really more like, do you have a signature sound? Mm -hmm. And I feel like you're one of kind of the few ones out there. That like, when I hear hear a piece and it's a Marty O'Donnell piece, I know it. Wow. Or I know when someone's trying to rip it off. <laughs> <laughs> Which sometimes can be kind of like the same thing. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But I was trying to think of like, all right, well, what is that? Is like this kind of sharp attack percussion that drives things. Mm -hmm. Is this really like? these elegant, uh, catchy melodies that are repackaged, and then maybe like the high end of the strings have like a really kind of playful tension and release that isn't too dissonant, but I couldn't really kind of like capture it. So I'm wondering if this makes sense to you. You're talking about using triads mm -hmm. and using maybe kind of like spread triads. So if you don't know what that is, like if you have like just a, a C major chord, you have an A, C sharp, and an E. You have like maybe like the A way low down on a piano and like the C sharp there and the E's way high or right. something like that to create but a big that's, space. That's what I mean by tertial harmony. Yes. So it's based in thirds, uh -huh. A, C sharp, E, and that's third, third, third. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a t traditional tertial triad. So what I would like to do is also do triads that might be three notes. So that's what triad is, right? right. Mm -hmm. But maybe A, B, E. Okay. So not C sharp. Yeah. So then you have, like a, minor third. So then you have like a suspended two chord or it, something it, if you want to look at it that way. But. It does accept that if you say, and I, this is theory, but mm -hmm. like if you say it's a suspended two chord, that means you're probably going to resolve it. So you're considering the B to be a dissonance. But if you go A, you spread, you spread that out. It's mm -hmm. quintal. It's built in fifths. Okay. If you go A, E, B, the B now is a ninth above, A, E, B, and you say that's consonant that's that's home that's, that is beautiful i don't need to move nothing needs to resolve now you're talking that's, that's the that's the sound that's and that's the sound. and it just it all clicked in my head when you <laughs> said that because i feel like all of your compositions are very strong even when they're kind of like delicate there's like an underlying strength to them mm. and it doesn't even another thing that you said that was really cool was uh i think you're playing something from one of the destiny games uh -huh. and it ended kind of abruptly i'm like it's like a minor six chord or something like mm -hmm. that and yeah. you're like that's when i just ran out of ideas <laughs> yeah, exactly. and i'm like well that's what i do all the time <laughs> and it's totally right i run out of ideas so i'm like we're done <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's actually more because i like Playing it today for the audience, uh, I was like, "This is a little embarrassing because I never do that to be played for anybody." It's I'm what I'm performing when I'm improvising, um, and I, I hit you know record. It's for me. Mm -hmm. This is for me, the later me. Okay. Uh, it's like after lunch the next day, a week later. Mm -hmm. I'm like, "Yeah, what was that stuff I was thinking?" And I hit play, and I'm like, "Oh, well, that was good. Oh, that wasn't very good. Well, that part's good." Oh, yeah, Bling. I ran out of ideas. Yeah. So I know that was the end of my ideas. Okay, so it's almost like a pause button. It's like a pause button, go. but like, I can't just stop. I have to like do something. Is yeah, that, that makes sense. Otherwise, it would be just unfinished <laughs> and just going to bother you yes. until you have time to come back to it. Exactly, right. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And another thing in my, my crack research I did for this interview crack. here, I read your Wikipedia page. Uh-oh, okay. All right? And it says that in the early days, the, the pre-icon Marty O'Donnell days. All right, yeah. You're working on a game called, I think, Septericore? Septericore. And there was a fire. Yeah, they and then, showed the fire. Yeah, yeah, I saw the picture of the fire. Now, on your Wikipedia page, it says you were hoisted through a window yeah, to I was. save... I, I, I've never been hoisted through a window, <laughs> and I want to know the actual, like, how tall was this window? So we were three stories up. Okay. And it was an old loft brick building, and we were on the top floor. And um, there were really big windows in the front, and they were all burned through, and, and the floor was wood, and it had collapsed, but the, the two ends of the studio were still kind of a place you could get to. I had a friend who did s stuff with machinery, and he had some sort of access to a cherry picker. Huh. So he brought this cherry picker downtown in Chicago, <laughs> drove it up to the front of this building, which was still smoldering, uh, and it was, and actually, it was also like twenty below zero. So there was just oh, from the fire hoses. Gosh. It was just ice every place, and 
burned everything and I was like, I just gotta get in there to see if I can save anything. So he got me in the cherry picker, hoisted me up to the third floor. This is, yeah, wow. yeah. And so I went in and that picture was me looking through things and I found over in the corner a stack of jazz drives, jazz cartridges. You remember what Don't even are. know what that is. You're, it's some a, of your it's... fans will know, <laughs> the older fans. Okay. They were one gigabyte cartridges each, mm -hmm. and it was huge back at the, in the day. Sure, There's yeah. A oh, yeah. gig on this cartridge. You know, you needed a special jazz. It was called jazz. Okay. It had nothing to do with music. It just had to do with the, the brand. Sure. Omega made it. Oh, wow. That sounds impressive. <laughs> the Omega Jazz Drive? That's Omega a great line. Drive. Great marketing on the Look it part. up. Yeah, it's right. amazing. All right. Anyway, I had a whole stack of them, and they, had, they contained all of the raw voice work that we had done with actors for some Terracore. Mm hmm. And if they were no longer usable, we were kind of out of business. Oh, jeez. And I found them. They were sort of frozen in a block of ice. I went back and Bungie we had just moved down the street. I wasn't officially working for Bungie yet. Um, I mean, I was working as a contractor for Bungie. Mm -hmm. So I went over to Bungie, and, and they were like, they, they saw the building burning. They were just a, just a block away. And so they first wanted to know, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm okay, but I need to... I need to drive these jazz cartridges out and see if I can get the data off of them. And, and we did. Oh, really? And so put it in, got the data off, and then they failed. Oh, what? So each one, we got the data off, and then they went. And then instantly just like at the, the buzzer? Yes. Wow. So I was like so happy. I had a hard drive with all that stuff on it, completely um, unindexed. I had no idea what was where. So I took all of these, these hard drives home then that I copied to, and found all the voice data and, and uh, we were able to ship some TerraCore, which was something we needed to do just before we were working on Halo. So there you go. And through the wreckage and the rubble, yes. you dug through and you found a way to persevere. Yeah, yeah, that was a, that was a big deal. That's fine. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you got a great story. You're hoisted through it's a window. Hoisted, yeah, the word hoist. I got to say, on the Wikipedia article, yeah. it kind of implies that the building was still on fire when you're being hoisted through Interesting. it. Interesting. <laughs> no, it, it, was... it doesn't outright say that, but that was the feeling that I got. There might have the been article. a few smoldering someplace, but there was no... It, it, it wasn't a smart thing to do because I it was not stable and if I had stepped in the wrong place I could have just fallen three floors down and collapsed and something. But I, I stayed on stuff that looked steady and there was no fire. So it was, the fire was done. And that's called dedication to your craft. Yes. That's what that's called. Yeah, put food on the table dedication. Yeah, that I guess is. so. Mm -hmm. So speaking about your craft, you know you've done a lot of big projects. Yeah. Right? Halo two or Halo Halo Two goes without saying. Fun fact, my brother was, for a time, the number one ranked Halo 2 player in the world. What? what? Yeah. So we went to one of uh, your concerts in Chicago, okay, okay. and he printed out his uh, piece of paper that said he was number one, and you autographed it, oh, and okay. your, son, your signature hung in our home for years. Oh, that's <laughs> great. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, was, okay. it was so funny. When he, was, he was he was stoked to wow. get that Marty O'Donnell Was signature. that the Play concert, or was uh, it VGL? I think it was... Video Games Live. I think it was VGL. It was VGL. Okay. Yeah. So it was mm -hmm. Tommy Tallarico then? Or? I, don't, I don't remember. Oh, okay. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, was, I, was, I was just stoked to see some video games. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I was there for. Because you were a kid. Yeah. Oh, uh, you guys. Ah, uh, I love it. But again, cool. the Halo stuff is such a, it's such a elegant suite of, of music, however you want to classify it. And then you go from that to Destiny. And again, there are other Halos, and there's evolutions of that theme through there. And Destiny was kind of like a little bit uh, of a departure, but I would say it's kind of in the same vein. Mm -hmm. And then now you're working on this new one, Golem, Go Golem, yeah, which has a prequel album, yep, which I'm going to link to, which I've listened to several times. It is so good. You're the one listening. Good. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. It's so good. And Thank I would you. say it's actually your your prettiest music thus far. Okay. Yeah, I sort of would agree with that. Yeah, and I wonder if do you feel like as a composer, because at the end of the day, you kind of have a job, and you're kind of trying to match a mood. To either, either picture or like a concept or something like that. Right. Are you? Would you have written that theme for this game twenty years ago, or do you feel like your tastes are changing as a musician? Well, considering the fact that the theme itself was actually written about thirty-eight years ago. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, like the lullaby, the lullaby theme, right? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But and that's not the only theme in the in right. the game. So there's other ones that I just wrote. And uh, but you know what? I think I've gotten more confident over the years to not care about what expectations might be or what others somebody else might do or what people would say well it should be something like this mm -hmm. 
I kind of trust my instincts more. And okay. It's just uh, maybe it's an ego thing, but I feel like, well, I might as well trust myself. So I think I do still take some chances. And I, I, I think what's amazing about music is how malleable it is, how adaptive it is. Like, that's why I showed that one thing, and then suddenly there's a sunrise. And oh, it's like, sure, well, yeah. Of course uh-huh. there's a sunrise. Yeah, yeah, it could be anything. It yeah, could now be it makes Notre sense. Notre Dame Cathedral. Yeah. It could be a sunken ship. I mean, you could reveal anything, because the music itself feels like you're revealing something. Yeah, for sure. So, um, music will, you know, enhance your emotions of something else, you're tr- some other story you're trying to tell. Mm-hmm. So it's me. Ma- it's really amazing to me uh, how much you can get away with just throwing some sort of music against some other thing, a story or visuals, and the the brain of the person consuming the two things together puts it together like that's the way that it was always intended. Yeah, for sure. Like and everybody kind of has a personal connection. Yeah. In one so way immediately or you have this connection because we put these two things together. So it's a, it's it's synchronicity. Okay, mm-hmm. that's what I think it is. Okay, that makes sense. And uh, it's. It's you can even get away with things that are like, well, that's not expected. That's like a juxtaposition, but I'm sure there's a reason for it. Right? Yeah. So okay. it's a battle thing, but there's this elegant music playing. So it's something that's sort of internal. It's the internal pathos and poignancy of battle. Sure. Or just it's like a, a different way to approach a battle scene, right? I mean, it's like you don't always have to do the same thing. This is what I don't like about movies and. Uh, TV shows and games mm-hmm. that start doing using music in ways that I already are I'm expecting. This is the cue to make you feel this way. Yes, yeah. and so if they do something that's like, oh, well, I wasn't expecting that. That's great. I mm-hmm. love that. So it's not always about doing the unexpected, but if you don't do it every once in a while, you're you, it just seems like paint by numbers to me. And I think that's really cool that you're also usually in your project the the director of just the audio, yeah, right. essentially, because then you can kind of like use those as a kind of tag team to really kind of make. A reaction. Yeah, I, I pretty much, I'm spoiled because I, I want to be the person making those decisions and I don't want somebody else to tell me like, well, we really think there should be a flugelhorn in this section that sounds like Wagner. And be like, there's and a like, flugelhorn when I say there's a flugelhorn. <laughs> 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 no, actually, I'm not quite that mean, but I was just like, you know what, you should write it. I, <laughs> that's that's even leave. worse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's way worse. The passive aggressiveness <laughs> to the poor flugelhorn person. Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, well, that's pretty cool. But yeah, the uh, the prequel to the to the game yeah. the album is really good. I would say it's probably your most whimsical stuff mm-hmm, today. Mm-hmm, I would say. That's good. Yeah. Now, as far as I like the the composition of that, yeah, I feel like maybe it's a little bit less of what we were talking about earlier, and there are more kind of questions being left open. Yeah, and yeah, the yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Could could you maybe walk us through how that worked out? From a well, you know, it's uh, from a composition standpoint, I'm thinking. It's an intimate story, it's a family story, there's kids. So I want everything to just sort of have this playful whimsy, you know, it's almost like this is Alice in Wonderland music, you know, okay. it's, it's like there's something magical and mystical, but it's not sorcerers necessarily as much as kids exploring. So okay. I just stayed with, I just wanted everything to have this little bit of a childlike innocence to it. For some of those pieces, I think that and when you sense. actually start playing the game, you won't you'll hear music you haven't heard on the album. So that'll be fun because you actually, when you inhabit a ten foot stone golem giant with a huge sword, and you see another one that's even bigger, and you have to fight him. Well, that guy's on a mission. Yeah. So it was like at that point, it's like yeah, the whimsical piano stuff mm-hmm. doesn't really kind of help that. So. But that's why I think it's such a cool idea yeah. as a prequel to an album because it allows you to kind of explore that space. Yep. Where there's there's a question, but it's more of like you said, it's like a child that doesn't have the answers. Right. It's not bad, it's not good, mm-hmm. but near the end of the album, there's a little bit of a thing that kind of creeps in, you know? So, a great precursor. Oh, good. I just think it's something really cool that I, ha- I personally haven't seen in, in games before. Well, thanks, yeah. I, so. you know, coming up with the idea, like, I was talking to somebody the other day, and they were talking about, well, some people do graphic novels, some people do, you know, YouTube somethings, you know, tr- longer extended trailer things as mm-hmm. prequels to, to stuff. And the, this just seems simple to me, to, to like, well, let me write music. I can write a story. I can write music that has a story and tells a story. It stands alone. Sure. You, because music has the power, just like a graphic novel. It's like you're reading a graphic novel. You're seeing great pictures. You're reading words. It's a it's a self-contained thing. And music that goes along with movies or TV or games, it's music that serves a purpose. But music can also just stand alone. And if it's strong enough, it tells its own story. 
and then people can have it in their heads and they say, I had an emotional reaction, now I'm playing this game, I'm he hearing something that is viscerally causing a reaction because I'm already sort of have emotional equity there. So it's a, I think it's a good deal. Hold it off. <laughs> I'm, excited, I'm excited for the game. Good. Well, excellent. That's what we want. Cool. So definitely, Martin, thank you for being here. Thank you, man. It My was guy. great to meet you. I'm going to link a bunch of stuff in the channel. You got a YouTube channel too, by the way. I do. Yeah. Mario O'Donnell uh, on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Check it out. Yeah. Uh, amazing content over there. <laughs> Maybe even some more stuff in the future, right? Yes, absolutely. I'm going to keep, I'm going to try to see if I can get it as big as you. I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I, hey. Just grab onto my coattails. Okay. Yeah, that's how it's going to work out here, sure. <laughs> All right, thanks.